But I, I do feel a sense of obligation because I know what we've done works, and the data will prove it. And if that's the case, and, and Dale Stockton asks me to come here and present to you guys, if it worked for us, and I know for a fact my people are safer and they're getting home, when I say my people, I always mean my, my citizens and, my, and the people that work for my office. If I know for a fact it works, if I don't come here and try to get some people to buy into that, who then am I condemning? Yeah, it's a weird sense of obligation that keeps me up at night, but, but I do think that there's some truth in it. So my path, in 2015, I went to the National Academy, and the, the plan was that the sheriff and I, we've seen a lot of people come go to the National Academy before we became the sheriff and under sheriff. I've been through command staff since 2008. He's a newer sheriff. He just, I'm just the one that he retained. But we saw these people leave for the National Academy. They came back, oddly enough, the exact same person that left with no new skill set, no real new knowledge, and they didn't institute anything in our organization. So it was expensive, and they were gone a long time. So we decided, I'm going to go to the National Academy, and I'm going to try to bring some stuff back. And if I can't, if I'm going there looking for it and I can't find anything, then why on earth are we going to send anybody in the future? So I went to the academy. One of my classmates is in here. And the first five weeks of the academy, we went through the crappiest speakers I have almost ever heard in my entire life. Now, I had found some other programs I loved, and I realized that it is valuable training. Week five happens to me. First thing that happens in week five is on Monday, the sheriff calls me and tells me, John Sadro, one of our deputies been involved in a collision. He was in court. The judge wanted a material witness from the hospital. So he takes an advocate in the front seat. He goes to the hospital four miles away. He's on his way back. He used to live right there past this old house. He's doing 49 and a 25. He's being distracted by the guy playing sick in the back, back, in the back seat and the advocate talking to him. He runs the stop sign that he had been through thousands of times and actually stopped at. He runs it, he hits a car, that car brings into another car, that car hits a, hits a gentleman, <coughs> severs both his legs. That's Monday. Preventable? Sure, of course. He was charged criminally, two counts. Um, so then, on Wednesday, we have a speaker. First speaker is somebody who is telling us about below 100. Now, we had it in our organization just at 30,000 foot level, just barely touched on it. I was vaguely familiar with it, but I knew of its existence. I had a couple instructors. They just didn't teach it to our organization. They would teach it at essential skills training a little bit once in a while. They'd basically sneak it in. The second instructor was Kim Schlau. Everybody's going to hear something different when you hear Kim. She's the one who lost her two, the two daughters. She spoke for an hour to our class. It impacted around her. So I want you to listen to her and think about what she's saying, not just the death of her kids. <clears throat> if I can make it work. It was the Friday after Thanksgiving. Well, no. They, Justin and Kelly, left my house around 8 a.m. to go to their dad's house to have a picture taken with their dad and with his family. And Jessica had to work around 3 o'clock, so I figured they would be home probably around noon. And so um, they weren't home, but it was, it was a nice day. It's the day after Thanksgiving. I thought, you know, maybe they stopped off to go shopping. I tried calling her a couple times. She wouldn't answer her phone, but that's what teenagers do. They buy themselves cell phone. They don't, they don't use it unless they need money. And then um, uh, it started to get closer to 3 o'clock when she was supposed to work. And then her work called me, and I knew that she was not an irresponsible kids to just go off work and so I kept calling and calling and I called their dad and asked what time they left and he said they left probably around quarter to, to 12 and he actually had to go into work um, and he was diverted around that crash. Um, he couldn't get down with the interstate because of that crash, not of course not knowing that you know what the what the crash was, who was involved in it. Um, around four I really started to the mom sense started to go off and really started to think there's you know something's not right here. Um, then her boyfriend called, said he had to talk to her, which really made me think, okay, you know she can ignore me, but odds are she's not going to ignore her boyfriend. And then probably around 
I don't know, around four to five. And, um, you know, it's November, it gets dark at five o'clock, and I was really starting to to feel like I needed to do something. I didn't know what I wanted to do, but I wanted, you know, I, I couldn't just stay at home and keep calling your cell phone and leaving, you know, nasty messages. I, I needed to go do something. So I told Madeline to go get her coat on, and um, we would just, you know, I said, let's just go for a drive. I didn't want to, I didn't want to worry her, but I knew she could be, you know, Jess and Kelly were home, and, and I was a little upset. So she went to go get her coat, and I heard a car door shut in my driveway, and my dog started barking, and I thought, oh, good, you know, they're home, and it's that mom thing again, you know, you simultaneously want to hug them and beat them, and that's kind of what I you know, felt, that I thought, you know, I'm going to yell at her for freaking me out, but I'm really, really glad, you know, to see her, and I opened my front door and I have a storm door and I looked through that glass and I saw two Illinois State Police and the coroner and a chaplain uh, coming out my, my porch and, and I remember starting to reach for the door handle and thinking if I don't open this door it's not real because as soon as I opened this door I mean I didn't know that they both were dead but with the coroner there I knew that you know that one of them probably was and and I just, I remember thinking, as long as I don't open this door, I still have my kids. And so I let them in, and they asked if I owned that <coughs> my car Jess was in. And then they asked who would have been in the car with Jessica. She had her purse and her driver's license. But Kelly, being 13, didn't have any ID. And then I was standing in my foyer, and I had a table that had their school pictures on it. And I gestured to the table, and I said, her sister, Kelly. And then the looks that were on their faces told me I had probably lost both of my daughters that day. And they told me that a uh, Illinois State Police officer who was responding to a call uh, lost control of his car and crossed the median and, and uh, drove into Jessica's car and killed her and, and Kelly. And that's what we were told that day because that's all they knew that day. Okay, so sad. And it's, it's really difficult for people, yet sometimes she's there for an hour. After that, she talks about how much she likes the police um, and just wants us to be safer. So everybody in here just heard either something sad or some people are mad. Um, some people, you know, weren't watching. <laughs> you know, the, we, run the, we run the gamut. What I heard that day was, it was preventable, right? That trooper at 126 miles an hour on his phone and on his radio and going to a collision he'd been called off of, that trooper could have prevented it. Who else could have prevented it? He had a history of driving poorly. His command staff could have prevented it. What about his sergeant that day? What about his best friend that day? Anybody could have prevented that. I mean, nobody knew. But I'm, I, I would be willing to bet that everybody knew how he drove. And maybe somebody brave and strong enough could have could have prevented that. I in my career, uh, just like you, I got 30 years. I've you know done just about everything in patrol, just like most of the people in this room. I've known that guy. Maybe not quite that bad, but, but I didn't say shit. Well, something's changed. And that's that. I'm an undersheriff. Had rank for a long time. I have this responsibility. So I called the sheriff. And I said, I, I found one of the things that I want to do. It's below 100, but it's kind of below 100 on steroids. And he just, he's all about safety. Everybody says that. Everybody says safety first, right? Everybody in this room? Safety first. Safety first. So we start to develop plans beginning in June. That's 2015. So I got out of the NA in, I think, June. Um, and it's extensive. It isn't just posters. People slap a poster up. Done. Yeah, we trained a few people below 100. We're a below 100 organization. Where's the follow up to that? Where's the commitment? Where's the training? So I came home and I was preparing for a January 2016 launch of a safety program. We call it below 100. We call it that. I call it a safety program. Um, and what Dale's talking about was towards the latter part of 2015. Every one of my FTOs was required to go through below 100 training and train the trainer. 
Every one of my EVOC instructors is required to go through below 100 training and train the trainer. It's not very expensive. They come out for travel expenses. You bring them out or you can find one locally. I'll talk about some of these things later on, so you'll get them. I'm going to show you data. I'm going to show you what happens with dollars and cents in our organization. It's, I know that this isn't the way you're supposed to do it. I didn't have these grand goals. I had no goals other than just to get people home. But all the data that was produced was produced by risk management, human resources, fleet, all those people. I also wanted all command staff and all my lieutenants to go through train, go through not train the trainer, but at least below 100. Do I need everybody's buy-in? And command staff, mm, I, have, I say this sometimes and not everybody agrees. My style can be abrasive and I will apologize for that at moments here today. Uh, you can't make everybody a leader. You just can't do it. We desperately want them to be leaders, but we can't, they just don't become them. But I promise you this, we are paramilitary. I can make people do the things that leaders do, even if they don't want to. So most of my command staff, all in, and I mean that's captain and above, we're 800. We're, we're 300 plus commission, but overall we're 800. So even my one captain, who is not fond of this program at all, Man, he seems like a cheerleader to most people from the outside looking in or looking in. So the supervisor training I prepared, I went to every roll call in my organization in the latter part of 2016, Sheriff was with me. And whatever unit we were visiting, their chief was with us, and their captain, and their lieutenant if they had them. We talked about 2016, we talked about getting people home, we talked about technology issues, we talked about below 100. We talked about what was going to happen with the pursuit policy. I'll talk about. We talked about what was going to happen with the driver review board, which I'll talk about. Essential skills training, supervisor training. Every, everything that we rolled out in that plan, we prepped them for months. I've got eight unions. Now, I don't know, I know not everybody in here has, eight, has any unions. I have eight with eight different labor agreements. Now, those labor agreements offer them great protection. And most of our unions, most of the people in all communities, we get along with just fine. I don't have a problem with it. But I started in the middle of 2015 dealing with these issues, and I continue to today. That's not a complaint. That's just what we need to do, right? It's just part of the job. We're getting through it. There's half of the things affect them, and they need to be bargained. The other half do not, and I can just implement. But I don't. I still let them help. I still let them dictate in some ways. I let them be part of the decision making. What happens when I go to a union and say, I am going to implement this and I can and you know it. So I'm going to give you a choice. You can come to the table with me, we can talk about it and develop it together, or I'll implement it the way I want. They always come to the table and they always instantly are saddled with responsibility and buy-in because they're part of the decision making. So whether you have unions or not, I would encourage you to do everything that you can to work with your labor, your labor, not labor groups, you don't have it, your labor, buy-in, give a part of the decision making. It's their lives you're trying to save, right? Get them home, keep them from getting charged criminally like John Sagro. You think that if the sergeant had thrown an arm around him that morning, which is free, and said, be safe today, watch your speed, be careful, I want to see you get home. How valuable could that five seconds have been in that man's life? So, supervisor training. I have 90 supervisors that show up that day. The first speaker is Kim Schlau. She'll come out. I'll offer you guys anything that you need in all of this, including the one hour video we took that day. It's high quality. We had her permission. She just wanted a copy. That was her payment. So we brought her out the first hour my 90 supervisors was her. We talked about our new pursuit policy, we talked about the driving review board and everything else that we were doing. And I'll give you exactly what that looked like in a few minutes. We reached out to every partner we could find. Believe it or not, at our supervisor training in Snohomish County, John Marshall was there. I'm not gonna necessarily go through every single one of these um, and, and dissect it, but I'll tell you that they're all super important. <coughs> Below 100, no brainer. NHTSA, one quick thing that's a little bit funny is Dale said that, listen, we want a case study. 
I didn't know John Marshall at the time, but they wanted a case study. And I'm like, I don't care. Look at any of our stuff you want. We're going to do this no matter what. If you guys want to watch it happen, by all means, go ahead. I had no idea what I was saying. I didn't realize that John was going to go out and hire some analytics group and have them you know, take a look take a look behind the curtain like nothing I've ever seen. Hey, okay, we'll start with, can we have every single report from a collision and a pursuit, anything bad that happened with the vehicle for like the last three years? And then they've gone on from there. One thing you will all get out of it, it won't be just my data in the end, you're going to be able to watch and see what happened, good, bad, or indifferent, over time when it comes to our office and when we're implementing, when we're committed to safety programs. You keep hearing positional authority. How many people in this room have any rank at all? Please raise your hand. Just about everybody. I say this to my people, especially when they push back just a tiny little bit, and it's not that many. You are a volunteer. You raised your hand. You asked to be selected. You tested to be selected. To embrace the authority and the responsibility that comes with it. You did. So I tell them, man, you know, I listen. I get it. If you if you're not that committed to getting all of our people home every single day, I do. It's a huge responsibility. Just I need it in writing when you hand me your bars back. We've got lots of room in this organization. Is it abrasive? Who wouldn't think that? Can't tell me some of the people in this room if that your leadership is not committed to safety and to their people's well-being. You cannot tell me that they're your favorite. Oh yeah, yeah, I love them to death. Yeah, they don't care a lot about getting our people home, but other than that, they're awesome. Risk managers, any in the room? My risk manager is like. He's not, he's not really the kind of person I would drink beer with, but man, does he want to be my best friend. Uh, you think about, you'll see some slides about litigation here in a little bit, and about the dollars associated with it. So maybe I don't have a new best friend, but what I do have is money that I've never had access to before with him. If I want money for posters, which I will send you if anybody wants some. If I want money for training, you name it. We showed value in it. Our insurance carriers, I'm stuck on a conference call with insurance carriers every quarter. Never had been before all this. Why? Because suddenly we have less claims. Suddenly we're hurting less people. When I say people, I don't mean just our own. I mean all of our citizens as well. Leap, they're tired of wrecking cars. I don't know about you guys. I don't know, I don't know how big your organizations are. But man, all those things, we, we get stuff. Not as much as we used to, but we continue to. How, if you have a decent-sized fleet, how would your how would your shop, how would those guys feel about decreasing it by twenty percent, thirty percent, forty percent? How about decreasing fuel consumption by that much? How about brakes? Not just dents. How about tires? How about doubling the life of your tires? All that stuff. It's not super complex necessarily, but it's things you don't think about. I have never known a group more committed to cops' safety than our mechanics, other than our supervisors. Oh, excuse me, I didn't do supervisors, I meant dispatchers. I did below 100 training, like a half hour for the guys in the shop. Man, they've got new fancy lights on our car. You can see it from every angle. It looks like a, like a beacon from Lord knows how far away. They're like, yeah, people are going to see this and they're going to hit at us. Our dispatchers, <clears throat> we all know they care about us. They're invested in us. They worry about us. I've never seen them like this before. <coughs> I, did super, I, did super, I did training for their supervisors first. They implored that we do it for their for the people. They saw the posters around. Unbelievable, the commitment. Now, sometimes when they remind people over the air that they should either slow down or wear their seatbelt, that's a stretch. And it causes a little friction. But man, it's fun. Labor groups, I talked about that. It's the leadership of the labor groups getting into the decision making. Even if you don't have a leader group, a, leader, a labor group, decision making, decision making. 
let them get involved in it. You heard this from Gordon Graham and firefighters about they debrief everything a lot better. Not, not better. Do me a favor, uh, Elliot Near Miss um, Police Foundation Group, get on the website, turn it into roll call training, do whatever you can. It's learning from our lessons. The FAA does it, they've got thousands of them. They will tell you that they have they have averted catastrophes in plane crashes. And you name it. The fire department, they do fire services does a great job with near miss. We are horrible. But with near miss, you can get on there, you can anonymously put in something at any level that other people can learn from. They vet it, it's safe, um, and we're doing the best we can to invest in it. We get people that will put that put some stuff on there that somebody from Snohomish County can save somebody from here just by simply then it almost went bad today. And this is how this is what happened. The, when I say municipal state agencies, I, I mean you and, um, and mine locally. In Snohomish County, it's more difficult than it is any place else I go. Because I'm the sheriff's office and they all know me um, and they know our group. And I don't know about the rest of the country, but the sheriff's office and the police chiefs, the police agencies, we get along okay. But if I say this is awesome and you guys should do it, I don't know, there's a boogeyman behind that curtain somewhere. They just don't buy in as hard as they should. I go to King County where I was with police chiefs last week. I will give you guys my business card. I will give you guys challenge points. I'll give you any policy or procedure I have. Like I said, I'll send you posters. I've gone as far as to send instructors. Do whatever I can. I offer that in my county. I get almost nothing. I live there with them. I go to King County and my last week, and my phone has been ringing, and my email has been going on ever since for for help and instructors and things that they want. Intelligence. Uh, so, who in here knows what telematics technology is? I'm going to talk about telematics. It's I put it in all the cars. It's a little black box. You know, when you get a collision right now, it lasts what six seconds? Is it down? You can get a download out of the car for everything it did for the last six seconds. Well, I have something in the cars that will tell you everything it does, everywhere it goes, breadcrumbs, geofences, seatbelt, acceleration, deceleration, yaw, harsh braking, you name it. Those black boxes in that car. Now, how I use it is what you probably wouldn't expect. Washington State Traffic Safety Commission, everybody's got those. Most people are familiar with, with Behind the Badge. They've given us funding to bring instructors out to us. Why? Behind the Badge, fallen officers, they love to prevent them. They love to keep them from happening. So, now we're getting to the things, we got past partnerships, now we're getting to the things that I would like you to consider. And we'll talk about each one. I told you that my FTOs went through all the way through instructor. We integrated field training. I don't know if everybody calls them FTOs, but we call them field training officers. We integrated below 100 into our field training program. It is not complex and it is not expensive. If we're trying to change a culture, which we all are, people say it's the Homer's County Sheriff's Office. You guys have this horrible problem that you had to solve. It's not my office that has a problem. It's our culture that has a problem. So that's what I'm trying to change within my organization. So you start with the new people. Every single day in their daily observation reports, there is a piece of below 100. Maybe it's seatbelt, maybe it's speed. Who knows? Every day that is different. It's, it's incumbent upon that FTO to be committed to this program and committed to safety in the way that we all want. Does it not make sense? Well, do I have problems with you and my FTOs? Are they all super committed? They're either committed, or they appear to be committed, or they're not used as an FTO. Can I take pay away without just cause in my organization? Nope, I can't. You test to be an FTO, you're part of the program, I've got a huge cadre of them. If suddenly you do not believe in this program, or you're not teaching it like we believe, you are going to continue to get your FTO pay. We will never once use you. We will not put somebody in the seat next to you. 
and then you poison them. If your attitude's bad, if you're not committed as we are, now you're like a good pan for doing nothing. Yeah, yeah, it's worth it. It's better than paying them to set a bad example. How are they viewed upon by their peers when that happens? I only have two right now. Well, they're taking up FTO pay. They're not FTOing. Everybody knows it. I don't have to tell people. I don't rat them out. Those are spots that somebody else could have. Those are spots that other FTOs could occupy and can be doing a great job for our new people who are committed to safety like the rest of us. They're doing more damage to themselves than I could ever possibly do. EVOC. Emergency vehicles, every one of them's been through instructor. I told you that. Every time we do EVOC, which is every single year, we have rotations. You'll talk about low 100. You'll talk about speed. You'll talk about seatbelt. You'll show videos. You can't involve the time. Last time, I did that. You'll talk about spike strips. We all carry them. We all have them. You know what gets us killed with spike strips? Yeah, vehicles and stuff. I get that. Poor training or not following our training. It's one or the other. It can be nothing else. Yes, the catastrophe could happen. You could be behind five cars in a line and something weird could happen, and we could still lose people. But it could be almost zero. Either no training or not following your training. We do that through below 100. We show those videos. Essential skills training, again, you all have training. We do it once a year. It's either eight or 10 hours. You gotta do CPR, you gotta do law updates, new technology, new DV laws. We do all those things. That's all essential skills. Maybe it's active shooter, who knows? It's also below 100. Everybody has to go through it every single year. And we change it every year. All these trainings we do, we don't do the below 100 program like below 100 does it. We use the tenants. We have our own videos. We use YouTube. We change it all the time. Give them different photos. Change the curriculum. I'll talk, I will see some posters that we develop. What happens to a poster on the wall when it's in the same spot for more than three months? It's invisible. No matter what it is, it becomes invisible. So we change them. Every three to six months, every work location, council chambers, executives office, shop, we need them. They hold the purse strings. We need them to be invested in safety and below 100 just like us. City councils if you have them, mayors if you have them. Get them invested. Make it theirs, give them credit. Man, there's nothing more awesome than the county executive stand in front of a bunch of people and say, look how safer you are because of what we've done in our vehicle operations. You're welcome he'll say to the citizens of Snohomish County, no problem, he funds it, and then he gives us more. Oh, good job, yeah, now I need 100 grand, sure. <laughs> Supervisor training, we have it at least twice a year, it's eight to 10 hours, it's, again, it's updates of policy and procedure, Lexipol, we're a Lexipol agency. We have near miss, we have speakers come out that have had issues, that deputy, um, not the greatest speaker on earth, but the one that was charged criminally because of the man that he caused a collision, lost his legs, he didn't just lose his legs. Nothing about him will ever work again, be the same. Um, we have people like him speak. Scott Fenner, one of our sergeants, uh, major crimes now, there was a pursuit, suspicion of stolen. The suspicion of stolen rear-ended him. Almost ended his career. It took about two years to come back. Now he's just in pain every single day for the rest of his, the rest of his life. We all have those. They go on and on. Greg Montgomery. Good deputy. Going to a call. Always wears his seatbelt. Clipped off as he was rolling up. Realized he was at the wrong address. Went another 100 yards around a corner. Off an embankment. 40 miles an hour. Hit a tree. I really believe him. I think he always wears a seatbelt. Just clicked off early, didn't put it back on. Ended up in Harbor View, near death for weeks. 40 miles an hour, 45 miles an hour, whatever it was, hit the tree. Are you kidding me? Those guys speak at our, at our supervisory training. Near miss roll call training, I talked about that. Anybody in here, we're cops. I know everybody in here believes in dirty pool. It's just the way we are. It's ingrained in us. 
below 100 spouses training. Hey, the idea of all of these things is to get everybody to buy in somehow, some way. 10%, they buy in because you said so. 10%, they're all about safety no matter what. 10%, they're that 10% that there's nothing we can do except for keep trying, and maybe they'll never. All the rest of them is whatever it takes. Whatever it takes, policy, procedure, spouses, so we invited every single commission's significant other to a training one evening. It was like three hours, food, drinks to get them there. We just said, we're just gonna talk about the organization and what we're doing. Here are the safety things, sheriff spoke. We did a lot. But we also said things like, you know what? When you're giving them a kiss goodnight, just hope them. Make sure they're wearing their vest. Now we weren't, I was overt. I'm like, poke them. If they're wearing it, just act, just implore with them. Don't yell at them, don't scream, just, just say, listen, I really want you home. I want you to put your vest on. Mention seatbelt. You think there's a one in 500 chance that if Susan Moody would have just begged him to wear a seatbelt that day, or just asked, or just said, look at your daughters, wear a seatbelt today, would you? Just wear it today. One in 500 chance he's alive. Yeah, I think so. What are the odds we impacted one, two, three, four of our deputies by having spouses below 100? One in 100, one in 500? I don't know, but there's a chance. I'm sure it happened. Is it worth it? Was it worth the effort we put into it? I got free food too. It was good. Dispatch supervisors training. I told you how invested they are in this program. We don't have to beat this enough, so or beat this up anymore. I would only say that every bit of this is organizational change. And managing organizational change is painful. How can we not? Every single person in here, almost without exception, raised their hand and said that they hold some kind of positional authority, some kind of sense of duty, some kind of obligation that they have made. Super popular changing pursuit policies, isn't it? So we were one, we're one of those agencies that we chased for a lot, and we still, we still are. So how do so they, how they, they go down, down so far? They're down, they're down the whole amount. amount. Um, um, you'll see you'll some see some data, 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 we may be sure sure that every single 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 Retired, retired California. California. How many, how many cops on cops average die every year in suits? It's three to five. It's three to five. In a pursuit, in a pursuit something, something happens. happens. Stand up dead. Stand up dead. On average, on average how many citizens, how many citizens kill, kill every year in pursuits? 300, 350. We kill 350 a year in pursuits. That's a lot. That's a lot. A lot of citizens. A lot of citizens. Some of them. Some of them. Are that. Exactly. I get that. I get that. Jason and Jason and Dean Live are being dead. Dead. Not always. Not always. Anyway. Anyway. Keep that. In keep mind. that in mind when it comes to the education, education portion. This is the this key is the for, key us. for us. And I and I, 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 I would like you would like think about think about this. this. Um, I don't. I don't know what your pursuit is. Obviously, this was in this case. The case. Our supervisors, the moment, the moment he goes into the pursuit, pursuit, have to get, have to on get the air, the air, save their number, number on every, every bit of it. Every bit of it. What they're paying for, right? 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 They, own, they own them. Own them. They're, responsible they're responsible for the deputy, 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 deputy safety, citizen safety. They make they they the decision. They don't get the required information, they require to return and terminate. They can ask for it, they're not getting it. 
If no supervisor gets on the air, air and it owns that pursuit, 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 what has to what happen? Has to happen? It has to, it has to be self-terminated. They will be they will be vague for a supervisor. For a supervisor. If, if it's rare, it's rare, rare. You right, on, right, on, right, on, really, on, really, on, great, job. great job. What used to happen? 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 Uh, chasing, uh, chasing stolens. Uh, we didn't have the data though. We don't chase stolens anymore because, because of all, because of all our suits are stolen vehicles. vehicles. And we can be somebody, somebody 7% seven, seven by the time they're, pros they're prosecuted. So, so I don't know what the percentage of our suits are stolen. It's just those are just those are just big body, big body, even seven percent of the time. 77 some percent of time, the victim, the victim, the victim's vehicle is damaged. Damage. So just, so just, so just this, this became, this became not worth it. Not worth it. And, we were, and we were getting hurt. And we were hurting we we people. Beware, beware of, this, of this though. When we know we no longer chase or chase stolen, and we chase and chase lives, lives, what happens what to our, to our, to our pursuits for these lives? lives. They went up. They went up. Three hundred percent. Everybody, 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 this is how we do our organization. organization. We're not taking it away, yet. away yet. We're going to do it. We're going to do ESP. ESP for supervisor training. We are going to pay people, people to quit chasing, quit chasing people, people that that are are that that follow them follow farther, 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 or you will always do a blood drop. Hopefully, in the end, we won't have to take it away. We try and try it with stolen, with stolen, stolen, and you know how, you know how that ended. We should be able to take, take, it, away. take it away. Better to find a pursuit, pursuit in policy and policy procedures. Does anybody, does anybody here have, here have a, something like something a drive and driving board? I, I got I got to I got tell you, I was not. I think it would think it would it would I'm a huge fan, huge fan. The results the results of the driving board you board to me to me uh, are, uh, are astounding astounding. We we how we how we, we do what we do collision collision <laughs> and every and every pursuit for those drive the driving board you board. It's chaired it's by chaired by the manager sure. oddly enough oddly enough or his designee there's a patrol captain the training lieutenant a patrol sergeant sergeant, 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 sergeant and a patrol and deputy. Patrol deputy. Patrol, patrol deputy, 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 deputy sergeant, sergeant. The unions, the unions they, give me, they give me five names. I'll take one I'll of those five names. I'll take one five names and I'll take off the drive on the drive for you. For the for, 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 sergeant, sergeant, deputy, deputy. So, so if it's a bad situation, I just make it possible whether or not they are not the drive board. Drive board sees every sees every. How do you how do you define how do you how do you identify training needs? needs if all if all divisions are going to be different chains of chains of command? I found that I found that the the, the, the key for me the key was, for me was we had a collision we had three collisions three collisions all of them all of them did they occur or see or see curvy similar similar right code right code. One of them one was, of them was the called damage. word damage. I don't believe I don't believe no one word damage is either. If you're thinking, if you're thinking about word damage, one of them was not preventable. One of them was not was not preventable. So one of them didn't count as a reason. For some reason, one of them, one of them, one of them the person was this is what this worked for, and the other, and the other one, yeah, you tried hard, tried hard, but you know, you're good, you're good, not preventable. Of course, of course, yeah, yeah, not preventable. So, so. 
I mean, do the drag, do the drag board, 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 they all, they all, every, every single one, one every board, board, every board, 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 we identify we identify tracing, tracing instantly. instantly. It all goes all tracing to our training the division. Is, is there? Is there? Talk about buy out buy in. So we don't. So we don't determine whether or not whether or not policy or policy or not policy. Whether or not medical or not or not medical. We determine what the discipline should be, and then we send it. We send it down to the man to do the investigation. investigation. So the death so the death starts in the start of the sense of counting decisions. Decision decision is self themselves. And they're way, and they're way harder, harder than command staff. Than command staff. They're, brutal. they're brutal. I mean, talk about talk about eat your own. I I uh, I um for you would probably would probably be probably the most stringent, stringent, which by more by more people out of see more see more people 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 see more Discipline, discipline, absolute, absolute system. 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 If you have a back, you have a back and inclusion in one one, you, you can do the same, same thing, same thing every time. single time. If you're in a pursuit, you're in a pursuit not a policy, not a policy absolute, absolute system. 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 We have it. We this have it. This is exactly what's happening. What's happening to happen? Collisions, collisions, one second, one second, one third. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. We're going to give you exactly what we did before. There is no favor. There is no favor. There's 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 so, so here's the thing that I should have been supposed to be either a leader or a shape or form. I didn't realize how many times you have the opportunity to tell our people how great they are. Every single time. Even when they rap. Even when they rap. And it's their fault. They are using their own good things. 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 It's training, training could like never imagine. Never imagine. Not, only, not only for that that are coming, man, that man, and command, 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 and so this is, so this, is actually, this is actually this actually this actually, this actually is, uh, is uh, really di really difficult not to tell you not to tell you really difficult really difficult the black box black box in the car they call it they call it the black box black box they call it they call it the bike the box they call it they call it a lot of things I mean I don't even think our legal state is saying that are people like this like this it's pretty bad it's pretty bad um, um, but I do, but I do know that as culture drives your behavior, behavior rather, rather in ways in ways that we remember that could happen. They monitor your seat belt. Seat belt. Seat belt. You know, you know where they see where their seat belt. I thought, all, I thought, all my, I thought, yeah, I thought, yeah, you once in a while, so does all the seat belt. Seat belt. Every once, every in once in a while. It's, it's worse than the same as the sleep. I really, I really, I really think so. Really think so. Um, um, I know for I know for a fact that my arm 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 is very wide. Wide mind is three hundred thousand miles, 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 miles a month. A month. Patient, patient, like three months. Three months. Good, good, absolutely, absolutely not. We do not, we do not buy our own adaptation to make sure we're safe with our people. We don't, we don't. Now sometimes, sometimes that's to us. You know, in the form of a complaint, and then they use it, they use it. And this is the can't talk to them. Uh, so, uh, so, so Terry, Terry, Terry Beck, my, my personal, my personal number is 48. His personal number is 47. We got tired of the same as Beck. We got tired of the same as Beck. So we could be crowded because it's all here at senior to me. So, so last year, he's got an infant. And I know it's like he's like, that doesn't work as important because I think when he's in, he's got a big and 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 um, um, and I didn't tell him that I was going to score him a score of 100. We reward you in scores. We give new cards at the end of the year. Ten people, ten people, the best score, the best scores, will drop five names out of the hat. The brand new car. We'll get a reward at the end of the year. We'll give them a lot of money. 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 We
There's lots of ways to do it. So, so, so I'm developing the system, system putting in the parameters, putting in the seatbelt, 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 you use it to carry back, carry back, shows up, shows up. Shows up. And, and I'm like, oh, I'm like, oh, I'm very, very, so, and so I call it, I call it. I listen, I came across this time, I came across this time, I came across this time, I came around, 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 I came
Operational uh, wheel fencing. I'm the sheriff's office. I've got seven contracts. Uh, wheel fencing. I'm cool the sheriff's office. I've got seven contracts. You just draw a line. Cool scene about geo fencing, and you can see. You just draw a line around the city system. Is that to make people tired? Or people pass in? Is that to make time that city go in? Because they see one of my guys. They're not doing that city bid. Because they see one of my guys. Last thirty days. I pulled every time. Last thirty days. And every time they are they are getting. Double the every time, time they are paid. You go there to have coffee. You every go there time. time. Visit people. We have no reason to have cities. You go there to it's visit people. We have no reason to have cities. Think of that because somebody has to be out of jail and nobody's left in the city. Somebody has to be in jail and nobody's left in the city. Okay. First thing we do is I will. I will okay. Fund you what? for that four I will, hours. I will refund now you, you owe me that for four hours. hours. Now how many extra hours we? Fifteen hundred hours for how many extra hours we 